Well, one of the things that I think everybody my age struggles with is health and weight and just dealing with, with age. And the reason why I'm, I'm doing this is because I really want to touch on two subjects. One is why saw hobbies are healthy. And two, start getting into that concept of, of doing firewood and trying to blend the requirement for firewood into something that's interesting and possibly even fun. Enter the saws. This, by the way, is that Hudzel MS360. And I've got a little bit of time on it now. I kind of like it. You know, it's a lightweight saw. It does what it needs to do. That's a gnarly piece of maple right there. I'll get it. Now, if I look like Jane Fonda, I could sell this as an exercise video, right? So I think what I'm going to call this is Redneck Exercise Video. Because there's a lot more people like this than like her. And this here, and all these blocked up pieces of wood, is the blending of a saw hobby, a health requirement, heating my house so it's a real requirement. Basically, I haven't had to buy oil for our house since 2006 because of the chainsaw hobby mixed with uh, splitting wood. So, to those people who think the chainsaw hobby has no value, it has a lot of value in my household. And I'm not trying to sell it, I'm just trying to help explain why I do what I do. And maybe by doing these redneck exercise videos, some of you fellows out there, or gals, will start seeing this as not just a uh, goofy hobby, but something that actually adds value to life in the form of heat and health. Funny how things kind of come full circle at times. And I was out working in the woods the other day and I ran into this hat. And that hat was one of the uh, merchandising efforts of another YouTuber, Nothing Fancy. I used to follow him, I guess I still do at some level. And at some level he's part of the inspiration for what I've done for the last couple of years. He's had a channel for the longest time, shooting sports, you know, more geared towards military and, and, uh, and law enforcement types, but still a fairly large channel. And I used to do a fair amount of, of, uh, of shooting. I don't do so much anymore. His channel over time kind of morphed where he got really involved with, with off-road motorcycle Type activities and of course I spent somewhere around 30 years doing that game and uh, an awful lot of those 30 years racing can't do that anymore so my new motorsport turned into chainsaws which is the inspiration for a lot of the current channel type work I'm doing now is because motorcycles are pretty much out of my life and out of my picture but chainsaws are very much a part of my life both in taking care of the farm but also heating the house earning some money doing logging type 
operations from time to time. I've got a, a large oak tree to take down for, for a fella. And uh, there's another facet to this hobby that I really haven't focused on a lot, but it's very, very important to me. And as I start working through one of my typical tasks for the day, you know, you might consider that. My current daytime job is sitting in a dump truck eight to ten hours a day, you know, going back and forth, going nowhere fast, hauling dirt, or in the wintertime plowing snow. And that doesn't do good things for your health because you spend an awful lot of time just sitting, you know. And in the past, when I had my own little business, I used to also mix that in with the motorcycles and, you know, racing in particular, but off-road riding in general, and that was my exercise. Well, now the, the, the main motorsport or hobby has combined both, and um, it's, it's hard to explain, but the fact of the matter is every day I get out here and I can spend some time with a chainsaw, I enjoy it. I enjoy the motorsports part of it. I enjoy the mechanical part of it. It's something I like doing is playing with mechanical things, whether it be a motorcycle or a chainsaw or a boat or whatever. I just, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's just one of those things that some people are hard wired to enjoy and I'm one of them. Um, but it's physical and as you get older, that becomes more and more and more important. I had a couple of, of uh, issues a few years back that really uh, were, well, I don't want to use the word life altering, but they were, which is one of the reasons I'm where I am now. Retirement's going to happen soon, and you want to retire a job like I have with your health so you can enjoy the rest of your life. That's part of the goal, which rolls right back into this. It's one of the, I think, more significant attributes to the uh, chainsaw hobby. I mean, yeah, it's fun. I guess there's actually a couple components to the chainsaw thing. One is there's just a lot of good folks. There's a community side of this or a, or a, a fellowship side of this, and I think you're seeing that online. And you don't usually see that in, in the competitive aspects of like racing motorcycles. Younger folks are about winning and not about... Uh, developing friends that, you know, survive the test of time. But I found that in this community, there's just a lot of good people, and that happens pretty easily. Something to consider, but the focus of today is just two things. One, I just found it interesting. I found that darn hat, because what had happened, I'm pretty sure, was when I was buzzing around in my quad a couple years back, because we have some fishing holes, way down in there and I used to go down there and drown a worm. That hat come off my head and I looked for days and I could not find it. And from the looks of it, what happened was it went into the grass and had a, an encounter with one of my bush hogs and got sent off to the side here, maybe with a little help of mother nature and the wind. And when I was out here working on this tree, lo and behold, there it was on the ground and hat that was lost I don't know, has to be like 2013, was found. And TMP, nothing fancy, he would be, I know, I don't think he'd be awful proud. I think he'd be pretty upset that uh, memorabilia from his channel spent a couple years down here in the ground in the woods. But there it is, we'll bring it home. And uh, I'm not sure what the future of that will be. I just thought it was pretty interesting and kind of made me reflect on where we've been this last few years. You know, I may get back into shooting some. There's a couple of guys at work who do that, and it's something I kind of miss, especially with the old military firearms. I used to really enjoy doing that. I just haven't had time. Um, I acquired a, a firearm in a trade for some chainsaw work that I'm really looking forward to trying to sight in and use and it's an, an old Remington 788 in uh, 22250. Really nice shape. Bore is good, rifling is good, 
and it has an old weaver, you know, scope of the period. It's like a 1960s era rifle. All period, all in good shape. I think I want to just sight it in and see what it does. But, back to the subject at hand. I kind of want to discuss two things. One, one I already have, and that's the trying to get rid of this kind of a deal and see if I can do something about heart health. And the last thing is, is this saw right here. Well, this is one of the kit saws. That was my tractor. This is one of the kit saws where it's a Farmer Tech uh, box of parts that I turned into a chainsaw. But the throttle linkage was and still is a little bit of a pain in the neck. Um, the hard part is trying to get it started and then going from high idle to where you can operate the throttle. And I'm going to sh show you as I fire it up. But once you get the thing up and going, it's the first pull starter from that point on. Yeah, notice the little hand on the back of that chair? That's one of those things that you almost have to have when you get past age 60 and weigh as much as I do. Yeah, that's a confession. Especially, especially when I go fishing. But to continue, and I shut the saw off to give you a sense of what a restart looks like. Basically, all I did was reposition the camera, shut it off, uh, sat on my stool, had a drink of water, and got my PV so I can roll that log a little bit. By the way, one of the things I discovered is Husqvarna doesn't stock parts for these chaps. I lost one of the little plastic clips down there, and from a variety of different Husqvarna sources, have yet to be able to replace it. So, something to consider. 
I'm going to go out of frame a little bit, finish off some of the top, and then work my way to this log right here. what I felt. Pretty lightweight, not a powerhouse, but there's no modifications either. But it's just a pleasant saw to run and it's pretty easy on the back. Doesn't vibrate a lot. And what you have to think about when you consider saws like this, first of all this is a kit saw. Do you have the capability of building a kit? Do you have the patience? And I've had this conversation before. Let's say a part's bad because statistically on these guys, you're going to have some stuff in there that you got to, you know, upgrade or replace. If you go into this with the right mindset, you can spend, say, 300 bucks, 350 and have a quite capable 60cc saw, you know, and you built it, and that's the added value. Of course, you could spend the same 350, 400 bucks on a used Husqvarna 460 or 55, and probably have a little bit better saw um, from a reliability standpoint I'm really not sure if they're that much more powerful I, I'm not going to go there just yet they in my mind they have roughly the same kind of a feel but there is a value in you building your own stuff there's some fun involved doing your own tweak and tune and it would cost probably 300 bucks to replicate this if you bought the kit and had to replace a, you know, a piece here and there, plus a bar and a chain, you know. It's a $300 to $350 operation when you're done. The uh, 660s, they're more of a $450, $425 operation, but you get a lot more saw too. I've used those for a couple of years. But you can't argue that this is a, a legitimate option. It really is. It would put a lot of firewood on someone's truck. Um, it really would. I like it. I'm going to run it until it stops, you know, or I get bored and have another project saw. You know how it works here. But I, I can't uh, tell you this is a pro level saw. I'm not going to do that, just like I didn't say the 660s are. I've had some that lasted pretty good. The last batch of cylinders that I got were sketchy in the, in the plating on the, on the big bores for sure. That's on the 660s. And, but the, the 54s were okay. 
my modded 54 uh, is going through something. I noticed when I did a, I have this new tool where I can look inside um, the exhaust and look at the cylinder. I'll show that at some later point in time. But it showed some stress. I'm not sure if it was me firing it up and just going flat out and doing heavy cuts when I was doing the tests or does it have a systemic issue. None of my other ones do, just that one. And no, it's not where I did the finger port. It's actually around the exhaust port. So something's going on with that cylinder. But other than that, I've had pretty good luck with these. Oh yeah, the first bling saw, that thing came apart pretty quick. So I had to put a different cylinder on that. But like I said, the last set of cylinders has not been as good as the first group that I had on these parts. But this one appears to be all right. And the last 54 I built seems like it's okay. But, but my point is this, is you get these for the puzzle part of it and you expect to have to go through a little bit of research and development and if you have that expectation it's money well spent and it's a useful toy at the end or a useful saw and there's a lot to be learned and a lot of enjoyment to be had if you go in with the expectation the stuff's got to be perfect because you spent your damn three hundred fifty dollars you better go down and buy a, an OEM saw that's really what it boils down to and this MS360 kit or O36 kit or clone saw, whatever you want to call it. Um, I would have to say this is a successful build and a worthwhile saw to have as a companion to the 660. I guess that's where I'm going to leave it. I may show some other stuff, but like I said, the two issues I had was I had to replace the oil pump up front. Definitive Dave helped there. And you can see how that uh, throttle thing kind of is goofy. It did take me a little bit of time to get the carburetor to where it's is, is uh, easy to start, easy to restart, and, you know, just the way it operates. It took a little bit of tweak and tune time, and I had to get rid of the tachometer. Instead of shooting for numbers, I had to go by ear to get it to where it is right now. But you're going to watch it uh, develop over the summer. I will do a couple of updates over time. And hopefully also uh, doing this a couple times a week. The next phase of this, of course, I have to split this and put it in a bucket. That's all part of the same one-hour operation. Um, but this video really is trying to highlight that blend of, of, uh, of health, the exercise you get along with, with a, something like this, which is a hobby saw where you build it from a puzzle. Those are two big pluses. To this is a, is a hobby you know this is about when the wife and all your friends say what the heck are you doing with all those chainsaws well putting firewood in my barn to heat my house with trying to get some exercise to get rid of some of this see if i can survive the next 10 15 years when i get into retirement and scratching that whole mechanical itch now that motorcycles are really pretty much out of my life so move on to splitting no more talking just doing yeah <laughs> you know the way you can look at it is this is some people actually pay to go to a gym Yeah, I've got a lot of video of me splitting wood this year. I don't know if I'll put a lot of this in there because I got some old maple and this stuff here is not going to be as easy as it looks because it's got uh, branches wanting to grow. Well, I couldn't do as much as I wanted because I got to take all my junk back in the bucket, but. Yeah, I spent some time out here, got some exercise, but I want to go fishing. Okay, so here's the question for you guys. What do I do with the Nut and Fancy TMP hat? Do I give it uh, 
a retirement service like you would an American flag? Do I leave it out here in the woods? Do I take it home and, and uh, well, dispose of it? Does it stay in a drawer? What do you think? What should I do with that hat right there? <laughs>